This is Deb Halfrich. I'm the founder of Wellbeing Philosophy, and I'm back at my alma mater, Carnegie Mellon, and I want to discuss a quote found on campus with respect, but also with a sense of questioning and inquiry. Is this the case? Now, I'm here side of HSS, and because I'm using a selfie mode, you're going to have to come along with me. There's this quote here. Make sure you can sort of see. You see? And I'll read it to you. And it goes all the way around this lovely little, little pit here of, of, of life-centric thinking needed. Learning results from what the student does and thinks and only from what the student does and thinks. The teacher can advance learning only by influencing what the student does to learn. Herbert Simon, Nobel laureate, um, figurehead of cognitive psychology, and um, really, when I was here, cognitive psych was required of every freshman, probably still is in humanities and social science, the Dietrich College now. Respectfully, I disagree. Entirely. Influencing what the student does to learn. Only. Teacher can advance learning only by influencing what the student does to learn. Do you have any thoughts about that? This is a Socratic, well, monologue, because it's, it's on camera, but I want to host these kind of Socratic dialogues. I would like to, seriously, actually, it's great, it's great. I could stand, I could walk around and do some, really great work here. It's a great, a great place. And, and respectfully, I'm pretty sure if Dr. Simon was around, he might have responded to my email because I would have sent him one. What I want to do is bring hashtag well-being philosophy to my alma mater, Carnegie Mellon. And this is because Due to decades of independent research, scholarship, and lived experiences of losing well over 80% of my ability to walk and talk, which I'm demonstrating I've reversed, from a toxic mold exposure that was on top of childhood neglect that put me in a state of morbid obesity until I was 50, at which point I lost 150 pounds in 50 months after turning 50. How'd that happen? Who influenced what I did to learn? I did the exact same thing, which is read on the internet. I did it without a teacher, which is pretty much how I learn anyway. So what is it? Well, well being philosophy is a new branch a philosophical inquiry. It in fact is a way to establish a new philosophical method to work alongside the scientific method. And my intellectual property contains a unifying theory of human energy, potential, and well-being. That is a huge statement. That is abundance incarnate. By the way, that phrase, abundance incarnate, is entirely why I disagree with this quote. The unifying theory of human energy, potential, and well-being is based on my philosophical hypothesis of bio-electricity. It's important. I like the dash. Um, you know, bioelectricity is not, I'm not making any of this up. What I'm doing is very astutely synthesizing what's going on in neuroscience and philosophy and linguistics and psychology, biomedical engineering epigenetics and body cognition is really, I think, that the, the, uniting the sciences of 
in body cognition and epigenetics with philosophy this is this is what bioelectricity is all about now neuroimaging big part of this so of course we get the hard hard and soft sciences we get the physical sciences we get the engineering teams i'm very interested in the megs not the electroencephalograms but the magnetic ones the ones that don't need to actually even be placed on the body how does that work i got theories i got hypotheses this word the biofield which is the nih term for the electrosmog of our brain and heart. And that is a crucial area that needs a lot of astute questions being asked. So here's the deal. I thought maybe I'd give you the answer, but no, I'm just gonna leave you with the questions. Who on the Carnegie Mellon campus can offer me a role where I can host Socratic dialogues? Start off a little Socratic monologue like this and host Socratic dialogues to get students thinking about why the quote is great and at the time state of the art we now have all this neuroimaging data all of this neuroscience we know where things are pinging where synapses are lighting up all over the brain but yet let me ask a neuroscience person where are our memories where's our subconscious I have a hypothesis and a theory. All right, it's been Deb Halfridge, founder of Hashtag Wellbeing Philosophy. Please visit Hashtag Occupy CMU and reach out to whoever you know, especially let's say Dean Shines of Dietrich College. Let's get me on campus improving. Because not only can I, this, this, this is, this is future looking, philosophy about the definition of humanness, but also I love to just explore how we think about thinking, life-centric thinking, and bringing the art of Socratic dialogue back in to the public consciousness. Again, this phrase, abundance incarnate. This has been Deb Helfrich, hashtag Occupy CMU. I'm the founder of hashtag Wellbeing Philosophy, and every now and again, you might find me performing as hashtag Redhead She-Hulk where I dive into my story, what I've been through, my lived experiences, and what that has to say about our civilization and how we optimize human energy, potential, and well-being. Harmony.